Apply these five elements to your training today and I guarantee you that you will make some serious, long-lasting progress. Guaranteed. Don't apply them and well, can't guarantee anything. In this video, I'll show you the necessary parts for the perfect training and specific movements that make all the difference. And obviously, I'll save the best for last, like the cherry at the bottom of a milkshake. Plus, the third part is just vital. But do not mistake this video or any others for coaching with insurance, safety, and progressions. That's a huge mistake that'll cost you thousands of dollars and years of your life. But by all means, watch these for inspiration. I used to do that before every practice and I would see 10 to 20% increase in performance. So watch these videos again and again. They really will help. And subscribe so you don't miss any of the trainings all of our top students receive. The first part of training is to recognize that we are here for a purpose. What yours is, I do not know, but there is one. Intrinsically, we each have a purpose. Our nature is purposeful. And so when we do things without purpose, like our physical training, we're going against our nature, which will produce negative outcomes. It would be like if we try to use a school bus to race in the Formula One circuit. Could be comical to think about, but disastrous if actually undertaken, because it goes against the nature and purpose of a school bus. So when we apply this principle to our own lives, brains, and bodies, we can start to see that they were designed to move with purpose in all sorts of directions. I'd even argue that we are designed with the greatest capacity for movement out of all organisms that exist. So when it comes to training the body, you have to think about all aspects purposefully, from warm up to strength to mobility to skill to flexibility and to a broad range of other aspects that all intertwine. Let's consider warm up. Is it just a bunch of jumping jacks or twisting back and forth to get the blood flowing? I'd venture to say that not when you're considering purpose. What is the purpose of warm up and all the rest? It's for de-stressing, for blood circulation, for joint preparation. And let's consider strength. Is it just to get muscle ups or complete the wad? Not quite. Those can be great short term goals, but there's quite a bit more bound up in building strength. But the first principle is to think about purpose. Rick Warren wrote a very popular book entitled The Purpose Driven Life. So should your training be purpose driven. The second part is to identify your strengths and weaknesses. Many people, especially those without a coach or who DIY it, will practice what they're good at. Sometimes we'll have to call students out for only posting videos of their front levers or pull-ups when we've got tight hips and hamstrings to deal with. I remember my friend who's co-owner and curriculum writer of World Federation of Parkour and Free Running telling me he'll see people who are good at Kong vaults and every day they come to practice, they'll set up the blocks for Kong vaults and do these massive Kong vaults over and over and over again. The same happens for guys with the bench press or women with yoga in their beach booty classes. Then what happens? Further imbalances are created. Insanely tight pecs and shoulders begging for an injury or great flexibility and fun with the girls but zero core strength and then joint pain. This happens in other areas of life too and then things fall apart. But that can be fixed with two things. One, objectivity like a group, community or coach and two, humility. Yes, I said humility. That's one of the most important principles we can have. And that's an outworking of honestly acknowledging our strengths and weaknesses in all areas of life, including training. The third part of the perfect training session is to identify the essential parts. Think about a training session like a microcosm for life, like the arc in a story. It's a little mini adventure. There's the setting, this is the warm up, arriving to the spot, setting yourself up feeling comfortable with and identifying with that place. Then the rising action. This is strength first if you're a beginner or skills first if you're advanced. Either way, you're slowly building up to whatever that last set is, that last PR rep, that skill you've been working on. And then the conflict. This is where you're trying to break through to the other side. You never end on a low note, always high. An example is Che at 47 years old when working on her press handstands. She got them in 12 weeks, but the biggest key for her was rest and learning to be more strategic with her training. And last night, another perfect example. I was coaching this student on an advanced skill. It's hanging from a wall and then pulling and bounding up and toward the wall with a front flip. He did a few with coaching, didn't really land any. And then when getting water disappeared, he was about to leave. I called him back and said, we have to finish this. Even if he didn't land it, I wanted to see a thoughtful, purposeful decision to end the training on a high note and at least several more attempts to land it better than previous. So what happened? I think it was about three more attempts with very minor tweaks in between each and he stomped the landing, totally standing upright. 
Now that's how to end a session, on a high note. It might not be perfect, and in fact, perfection doesn't exist, but a high note is achievable every single time. That's the climax. And then there's the denouement. This is where we take things down a step. We transition into some strength or light skills work depending on what you started with, and then ease into flexibility training. And finally, there's the resolution. This is where you share your wins and victories with your coach and those you're training with. This is one of the most important parts of training, and we do it every day, face-to-face -face and online. It's the last question on the daily check-in form in our online portal too. It's extremely valuable. The fourth part is to do it with consistency, in a community and with a coach. Obviously, there's time to train by yourself, just like your boss doesn't or shouldn't hover over you every minute. But in every area of life, there's those elements of consistency and community that provide the soil and water to thrive. And the fifth part is to take these principles and apply them to other areas of life. You'll notice I even created this video with these parts in mind. So apply them today and you'll be thrilled. And a couple of reminders. One, if you wanna get feedback on your training, book a complimentary coaching session. It's absolutely free, but you do need to qualify. And no, you do not have to already be fit. That's the whole point. We just wanna make sure it's a good and appropriate match. We'll give you a free level assessment, and if you want, walk you through the enrollment process. Done and done. Otherwise, keep watching these videos. I have more for you coming up on the screen right now. Either way, I'll see you in the next one.